scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. You're going to pray this. Please don't allow anything distract you. Big man is or leave whatever and focus on your destiny once and for all and end this thing so that your victory listen victory is real in this spirit don't don't think because of long-standing issues you now feel like victory no no victory is real you can walk in the experience of it one more prayer in the name of Jesus Every altar programmed over my destiny, over my family, by the blood of Jesus, I come against you this morning. Lift your voice and pray. Blotting out every hand, writing scripture says, and every ordinance that spoke against us, he nailed it to his cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Sit down. It will take us a week long to discuss this subject, but I'll just capture a few details that we may need and then we'll pray. Please, um, if if pastor will allow let me respectfully plead how many of you came with your request while i'm teaching i would plead with the ushers if you can you can just just wave it around and you carry the the basket and just collect those requests let's collate them sir if it will not interrupt your protocol i would just want the request to be in front here chapter 1 and verse 17 this is a very interesting scripture that is a classic on the reality of deliverance. The Bible says, but upon Mount Zion, look at the protocol. It's upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. Number one, after deliverance, there shall be holiness. Then number three, the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. So the end product is that you come into the reality of your inheritance. But the Bible says there is a spiritual protocol that leads to that. There shall be deliverance. Not outside Mount Zion. Upon Mount Zion. What is deliverance? In Exodus chapter 6, 6, let's look at it quickly. Exodus chapter 6 from verse 6, I hope. It says, Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord and I will bring you out. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgment. This is a system 
for experientially establishing the victory and the authority of Jesus Christ. I'll take time to dictate it. That deliverance is a system for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan, over demons, over the powers of darkness concerning our lives. Deliverance is a system for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan, demons, and all the powers of darkness concerning our lives. That means that in, in its essence, scripturally speaking, Deliverance is not so much about fighting. It is rather about establishing experientially the victory that has been wrought in Christ over Satan, over demons, over the entire arsenals of darkness concerning our lives and our destinies. This is very powerful. I wrote something here that deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer it's about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it. Dynamics. I'm rushing, forgive me. Number two. The second access point for Satan in the life of the saints is ignorance. Ignorance. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Apostle Paul is teaching Ephesians 4 and verse 18. 18 having their understanding darkened he says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart Ephesians 4 18 that ignorance can alienate you from the experience of this Zoe life that whilst it is true that this is a testimony that God has given us eternal life and he says that this life is in his son so that he that hath the son hath life but that your ignorance will rob you of walking in the experience of this light in fact the assignment of the God of this world according to Apostle Paul is to blind the minds of those who are believers or those who are the inhabitants of the earth, so that the light of the glorious gospel will not be received by them. So covenants, ignorance, the third access point is disobedience. 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 It says, having the readiness to judge disobedience, all disobedience, when your obedience is complete. When your obedience is complete thank you sir thank you very much let's just allow this upon this altar here disobedience Deuteronomy chapter 28 when you read from verse 1 to 12 it talks about the blessings that follow you when you obey it says it shall come to pass if that all that I command you this day then it says you shall be exalted above all nations and these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you then the first 12 verses he begins to list all of them and then he now tells you what comes upon you when you walk in disobedience covenants ignorance disobedience these are the three biblical access points for Satan and demons in the life of the saints it's a very important thing information that we must have now please write this quickly according to scripture again there are three levels of satanic influences on earth i want to explain that very quickly i've done a whole, whole teaching on this series it's called the mystery of deliverance part one to four you can access it online it's free and then just take Take your time and listen to understand this subject. Number one, the first level of satanic influence according to scripture is called deception. This is the first level. It's called deception. 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 Second Peter chapter 2. 
from verse 2 then we'll jump to 12 and 13 the Bible says and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of a system of deception go to verse 12 it says but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption verse 12 and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime spots they are and blemishes spotting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you there are people listen the level of deception will can happen to you whether you are a prayer warrior whether you are a pastor is a level that being born again does not exempt you from are we together yes paul calls it witchcraft he said oh foolish galatians who has bewitched you he's speaking to christians deception in fact apostle Paul said, the spirit speaketh expressly that in the later times, some shall depart from the faith, he says, and shall give heed to seducing spirits, he called it, and the doctrines of demons. These are not people who are bad. These are just people who are victims of the deceptions of Satan. The first level is deception. Deception. It is the assignment, one of the names of Satan is a deceiver. He is a master at it. He can deceive the entire world. I think it's Revelations 12 and verse 9. If I'm not mistaken, please give it to us. 12 and 9, let's hurry up. Revelations 12 and 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived how many? The whole world. He was cast out into the earth and the angels were cast with him. Look how Satan is a master of deception. He was cast out from the earth and what we know is that he was just roaming around the, the horizons of this side of God's kingdom. But by the time Jesus comes to the earth, Satan had become the captain over the kings of the earth. A man who had no inheritance through history had deceived the kings. And now had controlled even authority. And he told Jesus, bow to me. All the glories of this earth, they are mine. He's a master deceiver. Number two, the second level of satanic influence is called manipulation and control. Manipulation and control. This exists in the realm of the mind. Manipulation and control. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 23 Matthew 16 and 23 look at this Satan comes to Jesus not gain access to Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 the temptation the next time he would come he did not come to Jesus directly again he used the compassion of a man called Peter Satan does not only use negative attributes he can use good things about Peter to try to beckon on Jesus not to go to the cross and Jesus discerning he said no this is not just a compassionate Peter he turned and said to him Peter he said get thee behind me Satan and Peter is wondering me and he said I've seen more than you do not I've seen more than you can see he says thou art an offense unto me for thou severest not the things that be of God but those that be of men Peter he said, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. He says, and when thou art converted, use this same formula, strengthen your brethren. Because he will come for them. It's amazing that you can say Jesus is the Lord right now, and yet you do not know that your mind is under siege. Manipulation and control. Luke chapter 22 and verse 31 I show you scriptures like this because when you are 
dealing with very sensitive subjects is important to allow the Bible speak for itself. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. 32. He says, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. The third level of satanic influence is called possession. Complete influence and control over an individual. Possession. As we have in Mark chapter 5, the story of the madman in Gadara. We may not have the time to read it, but you just write it down. Possession. Now there has been an, an age-long controversy in the body of Christ whether Christians can, can be possessed or not and this has created a lot of controversy that is because many people believe that the only dimension of satanic influence is possession and once you are free from possession you are free i believe according to the authority of scripture and according to the the full import of what salvation carries that if one has been grafted to christ and his one spirit. I do not believe that that individual can be possessed in terms of his spirit and his entire faculties because the Bible says he that is joined to Christ is one spirit. So according to the authority of scripture, we can agree that, that sp the spirit of that man has been joined to Christ. But you are not a spirit alone. You have a mind and you have a body. Are we together? now so it is possible that you may never be possessed in as much as we believe possession to be but that does not mean you are free from demons and the activities of demons manipulation and control when extended can look equal to possession because when they hijack your mind completely so many believers do not concentrate on this they say i'm born again again i've given my life to jesus christ and yet you watch that there are different levels of demonic manipulations in their lives and then they refuse and say no way satan cannot access my spirit you are right even the body of moses satan wanted it when paul was praying that you be preserved he said that you are preserved spirit soul and body hallelujah why did satan wonder the body of Moses so he could enter it and if he arises as Moses everybody who believed in Moses will believe in that voice because the way the devil does is he fights you when he cannot get you he will try to fraternize with you so the day you are not there they can listen to him this is what happened in the book of Acts oh these are great men that have come to preach the truth so that the day Paul finishes his crusade and goes you say I saw you with Paul this is already a lesson for us ministers. We must be careful. Your, the, you, you, you rub up your integrity on associations and love everybody. But there is no command in scripture that association is compulsory. You have the right to choose. There's no such thing as once a friend, always a friend. No, you are a friend to the degree to which your values are consistent with the patterns of the kingdom. Kingdom. And if I just thought to press this in once and for all, there's this pressure all around, and, and people continue. I, I say it respectfully. We are not this is not a call to condemnation, but that you must trust God for grace to purify the sacrifice of your work with God for the sake of those you are ministering to. Please sit down, sirs. Are we together? So we have deception, we have manipulation and control, we have possession. Write this down, please. The greatest strength of Satan, one factor that will make him very look powerful over the lives of believers is called the flesh. The flesh. Not sin, the flesh. The sin problem was dealt with by the substance institutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross but when it has to do with the flesh the flesh is a system that you die daily to it 
you don't cast away the flesh what is the flesh write this down the outworking of the sin nature manifested in ideologies lifestyle and motifs is called the flesh the outworkings of the sin nature manifested in ideologies manifested in lifestyle and manifested in motifs the state of the heart this is the greatest strength of Satan over the life of the believer it is not necessarily sin because the moment you declare the Lordship of Jesus Christ and even if you come to him in repentance and brokenness according to the authority of Scripture the Bible says if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us it says Yes, but if we confess our sins that God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So the sin problem had been dealt with in Christ. But the flesh, a way of thinking, a way of living, and the state of your heart. This can authorize darkness indefinitely over the life of a believer. Hallelujah. The flesh is a nature of living, thinking, and acting that is against the ways of God. Now, this is very, very important. I have to jump. Let's deal with the three levels of deliverance. This is where I was really coming to. This is, this is, all those are just support information to guide us so that we can deal with this the three levels of deliverance, what I call complete deliverance. This is important for us, respectfully speaking, as men and women of God to note that in administering what we call deliverance to the saints, it is not just something we just pray and cast out spirits. There are rules of engagement. And not knowing this is the reason why you find out that men people supposedly are free for a while and then they return back Jesus taught extensively on the activities of demons and in one of his discourse this is what he said that when a spirit leaves a man so we know that spirits can leave men the Bible says that that spirit will go through dry regions is that true seeking for a place of refuge and not finding any the spirit will tell itself that I will go back to my house the man is free but the devil still calls that place my house and the bible says that when it comes it will find that man who he calls his house swept clean but empty then it will go and gather several other spirits higher than itself in ranking and come and camp and build a stronghold around that man so that the end of that man is worse than the way he was this is as discussed by Jesus himself. Now, before we talk about the three levels of deliverance, listen to me. I hope you know that Africa as a continent, by the grace of God, we trust that our children, and if Christ tarries our children's children, will have the opportunity to walk upon this territory free of the orchestrations of darkness because there will be a generation that will be determined to pay that price and detach them from it but culturally speaking the tragedy of africa is that many of our fathers before the missionaries brought the gospel in as much as we know it all that they knew was traditional worship are we together now they were sincere people but these demons came to propose ideas to fraternize with them for safety to fraternize with them for fertility to fraternize with them for um increased prosperity so they entered myriads of covenants on behalf of their children and their children's children even to the fourth generation protect us from war from our neighboring enemies and in response we will serve you while that agreement was happening you were not there just like when jesus was dying you were not there are we together now and so these spirits kept their own part i i once traveled to a place in this nation where they showed me a 
rock and they said there was a history around that rock that in times of war the rock would open up physically and people would enter into it to, to hide some of the few old people who were alive said they entered it but the condition is that the rock will eat the first person and the last person so the you are a sacrifice whoever you are first to enter and then if, if you are lazy and you are the last to enter you know that you are gone now now watch this listen carefully there are other people who made covenants with waters protect our people from war there is a place in this nation that when enemies come to fight the city disappears literally the people will stand and just see a plain land and yet there is a city there because the spirits entered a covenant with this people. now i don't mean to create any theological controversy but when you study other extra biblical texts not necessarily erroneous texts texts that did not make it they were not canonized to be part of scripture are we together now but they are also made reference in scripture you will see that it was some of these spirits that came and taught the inhabitants of the earth certain concepts on how to conjure spirits through fire they use the elements of nature and the supernatural the devil came and taught people these things and he will receive allegiance as a result hallelujah yes so we came from families when the missionaries came from the west to, to come and preach they they only knew the gospel of salvation most of them listen carefully the gospel of salvation is the fundamental gospel but I, I tell you by the authority of scripture it is not the only gospel jesus christ himself revealed to us the word gospel there means proclamation good news and there is a body of truth that jesus brought that he called the gospel the gospel of salvation is the revelation of the father's love to mankind demonstrated in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of the christ the object of that love is man and creation are we together now and under the gospel of salvation man does not do anything his assignment is to believe that report and to one when he believes it as true his reward for believing is the way the life of god what the bible calls eternal life but that's not the only gospel there is the gospel the bible calls the gospel of the kingdom in the gospel of the kingdom jesus is not savior he is king man is not just a receiver man is a witness so these are dynamics the missionaries did not know this they sincerely came with the gospel of salvation because they were largely missionaries and when they came and met our fathers they destroyed shrines and died the next day they said they died with of malaria but we know now with spiritual intelligence that it was not malaria that killed them are we together now yes so the average person who comes from this territory already has a backlog of spiritual things to deal with now it's an uncomfortable truth but i pray that god will give us grace to understand this and you see according to scripture the dynamics of the operation of darkness is that it is territorial in nature and they preserve their doings around territories by the ministry of spirits that we call familiar spirits that, that these spirits are the spirits that grow with the inhabitants of territories when you read the bible when jesus christ was casting out the demons from the madman in gadara they pleaded that he does not relocate them to another territory because they had been in that territory for a long time they agree with the people they have mastered the culture and the activities of people they are responsible for creating mind control patterns so you find out that there is a region where it is the women that feed the men have you seen that kind of thing some of you is happening in your own families no matter how hard working the person is he will spend 10 years in the u.s and return back there are families where the elder ones serve the younger ones there are families where all the men do not live long they have a lifespan these are patterns i'm showing you not to scare you 
We are believers and there is victory in Christ. But I'm just opening you up to this reality. There are spirits that clamp down poverty. You would see professors within a territory. There are territories where the oldest person living does not cross 50. The territory is full of young people who cannot mentor younger ones because there is a spirit that cuts the heritage of good things. There are families that are made of old people. Every time the old man wants to die, he comes back alive and a young man dies for it. You read your Bible, you will see that kings slew their children to maintain their own life. Are we together? There are families where marriages never work. The moment the woman gets married, the lifespan of peace is two years. She must return back to her father's house. So you see fathers, even in their old age, taking care of the entire children. There are families where if you rise, it's like a spiritual meter watching you. If you hit a threshold of achievement, you must go down no matter what happens this as i'm saying it many of you are looking at your lives you are seeing it that you go to bed and you are finding yourself in an old house an old secondary school you are writing an exam that never finishes don't, don't say it does not matter i'm giving you meaning to your experiences the moment they say you are writing a promotion exam there you go to bed in the night someone comes either to sleep with you or do something uh, and then the next person who found to help you looks at you and it's as if a spell is cast on them there are ladies if a man says he loves you it's a spirit that will appear and warn him and say you if you don't leave this lady he won't tell you what he saw a woman's life that is responsible for the backwardness of the man so I will just interpret based on what I've seen and I'll Say this woman is a witch. She may not be a witch, but the truth is she's connected to something, a, a foundation that is having an obvious implication on her husband. Ah, your life will change today. Oh. There are families that have raised presidents in this nation, have raised politicians in this nation and yet they may not have a house of their own have you seen people like that they will tell you by god's grace i raised this one i advised this senator i helped him in fact it was me that told him to run for senate there are people the evil covering on you make sure that every good person forgets you you labor over people for a long time when it it's time to help you. And some of us are men of God. Sincerely so. You fast and pray with people with all your heart. Hallelujah. I know families where men do not leave. The wife of the sons of the prophet. All the men in her life were about to leave. The widow at Nain. Her husband died, her only child died, and Jesus said, no, this is a pattern. This is not just the issue of resurrection. Hallelujah. You get a job and you rejoice. Everybody celebrate with me. You are dancing. The Lord has done me well. And from that day that you announced it, you go down immediately. This is why many of our parents today and grandparents don't love God again. When you ask them, they'll say, look, we are the ones who brought Renard Bonke to Nigeria. We brought T.L. Osborne. Those days we love God. God has failed me. We gave our all and God failed us. Leave me to go back to my traditional worship. Let me tell you what Satan is looking for. Satan is not looking for your money. He does not need it. Satan is not looking for your marriage. What Satan wants is transgenerational allegiance transgenerational allegiance bow down to me let your children bow down to me but there's someone in this place you won't bow in the name of Jesus the son of the living God Satan is not interested 
interested in membership. No. Satan is not interested in health. No. Have you seen people that is the same pattern of sickness that kills everybody? Twenty years, and all of a sudden, a particular pattern of sickness. The younger one, twenty years. Have you seen your loved ones sharing the dream that you two you had when you were their age? They will say, "Mama, I don't know why, but someone came to me in the night, an old woman, and your mother starts looking at you in a strange way. Say, how did she dress? And she describes it and say, "Oh, next week is your birthday." Have you seen people that have two two-year-old or three three-year cycles? Something tragedy, tragic must happen, whether death or loss. Every two two years, these are patterns that are caused by familiar spirit. But in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, today those patterns die completely in your life. Listen. I come from a family where the men never rise sustainably. So I know what I'm saying. I'm not preaching nonsense. He says the things that we have seen, the things that we have heard, even that which our hands have handled of the word of life. I know people who have spent decades in the U.S., decades in the UK and when it is time these spirits call them back they return back like thieves and they come and sit back in the village and die deliver us from evil hallelujah There are territories where no matter how nice the man and the wife to the children, the children must become rebellious. More. It was just an accident. people who build houses just when they are about to celebrate by the next day the whole house will crash they say one wind just came and pushed the house or those who build the house to celebrate it the next day they will die there are families that never eat the fruit of their labor just when good things are about to happen <laughs> hallelujah why am I telling you this? Because I'm about to show you the forces of deliverance. There are some of you, the call of God upon your life. If these altars are displaced, you will be surprised. It's the reason why nobody hears you. Who can lift you always comes late. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nathaniel was attesting to the fact that territories can carry spirits and altars and controlling powers that keep them keep people down jesus never looked and said nathaniel you are lying he said no leave him girl in other words he's not, not lying hallelujah there are families that you move forward but your pace is too slow the first person builds a house at 70 years. The earliest person to... Anybody attempts to demonstrate speed in that family. These altars cut them off immediately. Please sit down. Three levels of deliverance. So that we can start praying. Mm. Number one. The first level of deliverance from scripture. Casting out the spirit influences in your life and at the back of your challenges. That is the first level of deliverance. Casting out the spirit influences in your life 
and behind your challenges. Spirits do not just oppress people. Spirits can live in circumstances. That, that means your problem can have a spirit behind it. That's what I mean. Spirits don't just oppress lives alone. They can enter situations and empower them. A spirit can enter a court case issue and something that should be a simple issue can last for decades till it makes you poor. That one you know it's not an ordinary court case again. A spirit can fraternize with headache, something that you can just take Panadol and let it go. And that thing will remain for 14 years. Hospital will not diagnose it. Every time you see things that the physical laws cannot solve, there is a spirit that is making it alive. James chapter 2 and verse 26. Apostle James was teaching us on faith and works. And he borrowed a phenomenon of the spirit and the body to explain it to us. He says, for as the body without a spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. So everybody needs a spirit to be alive. By body, I don't just mean human body. Problems are bodies. There is a spirit that empowers them. Are we together? Casting out the casting out the spirits is biblical. It's not demonic. It's not satanic to cast out devils. The Bible gives it as a mandate to believers. When Jesus announced his messianic prophecy, he took out time to cast out demons, to heal, and to do all of these things. When he commissioned the apostles, he said, heal the sick, cast out demons, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, freely you have received, freely give. When given the great commission, he said, this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out demons. So there are spirits behind the situations of people. You don't solve those problems by counseling. Are we together now? Yes. It was Paul that began to express his frustration even as an apostle. In Romans chapter 7. He said that I see a war in my members, he said, so that the things that I do not want to do, I find myself doing them. And the things that I want to do, I do not find myself doing them. He says, for with my spirit, I serve the Lord. But in my body, that is my flesh, I see another war walking within my members. He was so frustrated. He said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body? Body of death. Then chapter 8 verse 1 says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk after, not after the flesh. If you like hide your money inside your shoe, it's like word of knowledge. Those demons would push them. They would just look and open. It's not normal. Have you seen people like that? Break the wall and keep your money. They will pass and stand in front of that wall and look at it. They don't know what is driving them. It's a spirit. You don't solve it out by flogging and by counseling. Hallelujah. So casting out the spirit influences. Now, this is a part of deliverance that is prevalent in the apostolic and the prophetic ministry. We believe in casting out of demons and once it is done within the allowance of scripture, that is fine. But this is not the only dimension. Please listen to me. This is the reason why many people's deliverance is not complete. They continue to do it again and again and again and again because casting out demons is not the only requirement for complete deliverance. Number two, the second level of deliverance is conformed to this world. The word world is the Greek word aeon. The thinking pattern that comes with this cosmos. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind 
that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So the Bible says to be transformed. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. It says to permit this mind to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. There was a belief construction that was in Christ Jesus that made him to manifest as the son of God. He said, let that mind also be in you. This is where I would respectfully observe that the apostolic and the prophetic ministry largely are not getting it quite well. We do well in casting out demons, but the ministry of the word, the preaching of deliverance through the transforming power of the word is not there. When you cast out these demons, watch this, the spirits go away, but that door is still open. Deliverance through transformation is like closing the door through knowledge. Are we together? The Bible says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. When you do not understand the principles of the kingdom, it will make even your deliverance look like it is not profitable. And can I tell you this? Over the years, demon spirits have studied the church and have studied men of God. They have known that many of us have not understood this dimension of deliverance. So when you cast those demons, they go out happy because they, they will be waiting for the person at, at the junction there. They know that that door is still open. So before you say anything, they go happily. They know that next week the man is back with them. Deliverance through transformation. What does this mean? A reorientation of your spirit. You close the door of the flesh through ignorance. You tear down strongholds, thought patterns. That is a dimension of deliverance. That's why it's important that the saints be taught the word of God. When these spirits are casted out of you, you should not just be left like that. You are now mentored and taught the word of God. Do you know how Jesus trained the disciples? He spent three and a half years teaching them, doing something to their minds. Afterwards, he said, you are ready. In fact, he did not even finish his curriculum with them. When he resurrected, he had no time to celebrate his victory. He said, guys, get back to class. We have 50 more days. 40 days I'm with you and then I ascend to heaven. And he was teaching them on the matters of the kingdom. The teaching ministry is the secret to sustainable deliverance. Write it down. The teaching ministry is the secret secret to sustainable deliverance more than casting out the spirit influences because mindsets are doorways they are gateways that authorize both the holy spirit and demon spirits into the life of a believer hallelujah deliverance true transformation Deliverance through transformation. That there is a spirit and a pattern in the life of this man and his family. Are we together now? And he comes toward a life. And Reverend Godwin, while ministering under the unction of the spirit, will cast out the spirit from this man. Now we agree from the authority of God's word that this man, the spirit, has left. Are we together now? Any helper just goes away from me, okay? And the spirit influence is casted out of him, but it still does not guarantee he will get a job. It still does not guarantee that he will have good people because there are laws in the kingdom that control some of these results. For instance, the law of honor. I've taught you the law of honor. Many times you've listened to these messages and you've heard me mentor the body of Christ on the law of honor. Are we together now? Yes. So, this man, this is the guy that God has destined to bless him. Watch this. This is the man who is going to give him a job or a contract or a lifting. This man has been delivered of that spirit, but he's bankrupt of spiritual knowledge. He will pass this man, pass him every day, and yet his breakthrough will not come. Because although the spirit is not there, he has not been transformed to know that there is honor. He won't greet, he is rude, he is arrogant. There is no demon.
demon, but he will still not rise because he has not been cultured on the systems and the methods of the kingdom. Now, I teach this man on diligence and the power of character. Are you seeing now? This is another level of deliverance. The next time he meets his destiny helper, what happens? Good afternoon, sir. Just this act. And the man says, ah, young man, I've been seeing you every day. You look very smart. Um, what is wrong? And he says, I've been trusting God for a job. He said, you mean it? And you know, is jo I'm just about to give somebody a job somewhere. A miracle just happened. Now, it is not the spirit. It is now the knowledge, the teaching of the word that has brought character in this young man. There are many, many young Nigerians in need. Demons have been casted out of them. But because the methodologies of the kingdom have not been taught them, they are still not delivered. It's called deliverance through transformation. So when you cast out the spirit influence, it's just one of the steps. Now, what largely the apostolic and the prophetic ministry does is that they will cast out demons from this man. And after he's free, after two months, he comes back and says, man of God, I, I don't feel that thing I used to feel again, but my life has still not changed. Are you seeing that now? There is a plethora of bad behavior, ignorance in the life of this man. The teaching ministry is the key to sustaining deliverance. Are we together? Yes. So you see these guys now, and this man comes, for instance, he wants to increase. Now, the demon of poverty that sits on his family has been casted out, but he still remains poor. And then he comes to sit on during a financial series here. And here's your pastor teaching that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. That the diligent hand shall be made fat out together. That the lazy man, because of the weather, will not sow and he will beg in harvest. Now, the teaching is. is recalibrating his mind there is a construction of spiritual understanding according to colossians chapter 1 verse 9 please give it to us colossians 1 are we together yes so this man is taught he came from a family of idol worship came from a family of negative demonic priesthood and sits under this unction and fire lands from heaven gets that spirit out but the man is still not free and then after one year of proper mentorship, the teaching ministry, exposing him to the dimensions of the kingdom, now the man is strong. He knows what prayer does. He knows what diligence does. He knows what honor does. He knows what character does. Are we together now? He knows what speaking the word does. This man is fortified in a way that those demons will not come again. Could this be where some of us are now? No matter who lays hands on you, and no matter what demons are casted out. When the madman in gathering was delivered of, of those spirits, the Bible says they came and they met him sitting down in the lecture hall of Jesus in his right mind. Jesus in his right mind. Them. And so it is that ignorance that makes Satan to look so powerful that he can veto whatever it is and bless you know, and, and oppress you. No, sir. Satan does not have that kind of power. Even Jesus knocks at the door of your heart and patiently waits for you to open. If the Son of God knocks your heart, why shouldn't spirits knock? I tell you, they are knocking, but they have taught you a way of opening it without knowing. There is no spirit authorized to veto through the will of men. It is not given to them. At the expense of your eternal salvation, the Savior knocks and waits for you to use your will to open. Listen, what you know about God and what you know about Satan matters. Let me tell you a secret. Do you know if this man has a dream? Now, watch this. If this man has a dream and in that dream he sees someone shooting him or an arrow fired into his body are you together or, or something demonic he can get up and say ah so this is how my life is he does not know that that very act is an act of 
mission in the spirit are you getting what i'm saying see satan is a master of the flesh realm and according to the law of birthing and the law of reproduction it will take the seed from the man meeting with the woman to have a child are we together watch this the dreams that satan and projects to you they are like seeds from a man they need a fertilization the same way a man can plant a seed and a woman's womb can reject the seed you can also reject those projections please listen there is nothing in the realm of the spirit that is absolute it depends on men for it to happen no matter how real you see that dream no matter how real you see satan knows that you may not have that knowledge so you get up saying this thing was real i'm even sweating it's over that is over it's like the woman receiving seed hmm. yes so when you get up and have those dreams and then you are fortified by this understanding Barrenness is a reality in our lives. You can make your relationship with Satan look like barrenness. That no matter how many seeds. The Bible says that there are three things that never say enough. One of it is the barren womb. So no matter how many times Satan sends those seeds. Through dreams, through visions, through circumstances around you. You are motivated by the reality of scripture. That while we look not at the things that are seen. But the things that are unseen for the things that are seen the bible says they are temporal a ghastly motor accident i don't doubt your vision but that is a seed looking for fertilization you can receive it through fear you can receive it through doubt or you can stand based on the word of god which is another seed incorruptible and superimpose this lies the bible says let god be true see a lie is not what is wrong or false a lie is whatever god did not say understand this a lie is not an incorrect information a lie is whatever did not proceed from the lips of the master so even if it is correct and god did not say it it is a lie Mm. so when you look at your situation now and god did not say it what do you call it so adjust your idea is our word of the truth jesus said i am the way I, I am the truth the truth i am life deliverance through transformation let me give us the last one and then we allow the third level of deliverance that makes it complete is called the discipline of conformity romans chapter 8 from verse 13 the discipline of conformity there is a dimension of deliverance that does not depend on god alone no man has an active no man for if we live after the flesh ye shall die but if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body who does the mortifying god only supplies the grace but the active is called the discipline of conformity there are many believers that leave everything up to god and just believe that things will happen just by itself no there is the discipline of conformity look up please ask any man who prays they will be lying to tell you prayer is convenient every time there are times you have to wake yourself in tongues and say in the name of jesus leg obey me god gave me authority over you you are going to stand up and pray there is no man who studies the bible and just keeps smiling all the time it takes discipline to do certain things in this kingdom. 
the discipline of conformity. No matter how anointed you are, if it's not an oppression over your life and you stand on this road, you will die now. That means you can choose to leave the earth in the next five minutes and God will respect your will. You stand on this road, the devil will program someone who is thinking like you too and two of you will kill yourselves immediately. That means it is within your power to walk with the provisions of grace afforded you to ensure that you walk within the boundaries, the provisions that are meant for the believers to make for victory. It's God helping us. If we're together, say amen. amen. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 8. Galatians 6 and verse 8. For he that soweth, now he's talking about farming. Look up, please. He that soweth to his flesh, so the flesh is a soil, and the spirit is a soil. He that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. Let me tell you what that means. That as a Christian, when you don't pay attention to your spiritual life, that laxity is an invitation that demons come back again to my destiny. No matter what kind of covering you are in, if you allow this carelessness that you do not do anything about your life. Oh, pray for me as you are going to church. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Pastor just wrote a book. A series was just finished buy the truth and sell it not uh -uh. you can buy clothes you can buy designers respectfully speaking i don't mean to be sarcastic and you don't invest you are so into the flesh the bible assures you that you will of a truth you will reap corruption it is not all up to a pastor or a man of god to deliver you there is a role that you have you cannot watch all kinds of things on TV, on social media, and pollute your mind from morning till night, and expect that the fire remains, and expect that demons go away. Do you know that there is an information you listen to for five minutes, it will take you almost six months to get it out of your mind? I will destroy people. There are people every two, two minutes, even when they are driving, they are doing something. It's terrible. You must have the discipline to conquer that addiction if you want to go far in life. Your phone cannot have authority over you. Don't let this become a demon. Don't let a demon enter your phone. Phone, thank you, but that you were created to be an advantage to my life. I should not be a slave to you. You don't know where your Bible is for two weeks. But if your phone gets missing for five minutes, if your recharge card becomes 200 naira, it, it looks like you are sick. You move around till you borrow money and, and put in recharge card. Where, where the book fell, I can't remember. I don't know where I kept the CD. Just when you was about to say something that will liberate me. Sincerely, I pray for my generation that God will give us an appetite for spiritual things genuinely. That would not see God as a necessary luggage we are carrying in our voyage through destiny. And you know, right now, when you talk about being spiritual and being serious, it is not trendy. It looks like you are, you are a nuisance to civilization. But the time will come when everyone will reap the harvest of the seed he has sown. The Bible says, let God be true and all men liars. I do not not know one man who has been a genuine passionate lover of God sincere not that you are using God to get, get things a lover of God committed to the truth of scripture walking in truth and you remain down walking in truth and you remain down no relationships there are many many people who love God sincerely so but there are very, very destructive associations 
Apostle, I don't drink, but, but all my friends drink, but they know that I'm, I'm the preacher. God kept me there to win them. Listen, let me tell you, don't fool yourself. That's not how God changes people. God takes Moses out of Egypt first and works on him before sending him back to Egypt. The training does not happen while you are in Egypt. Are we together? Yes. There are times that because God is insisting on lifting people, he can relocate you literally from your family for many years. Because even though he loves your family members, they do not hold a position that can allow the presence of God to build you. So he would disguise it either through a job, as a student, he would disguise it by sending you to a university far, NYSE far, a job somewhere. That system of quarantine is very important. That he takes you out of that environment that sponsors evil around your life. And keeps you in a place where you flog it out with destiny. And when you are made, he sends you back. Listen to me. Some of us, our parents had the opportunity to hear preachers say what I'm saying. And they were sitting on chairs just like you are listening. And they laughed at the preacher. Look at your pain today. is a result of their laughter and their carelessness. Now God is giving you an opportunity in this conference today. You can choose to say, I may have suffered what my parents did not do anything about. But I love my children too much. To allow them to ask me a question tomorrow that I cannot answer. And say, Daddy, where were you? I had an old tape and I had you were in that service. Why did you not say amen when they were praying? Why did you not open your heart to submit your prayer request? It's called the comeback. God is about to lift families. Please rise up on your feet. My deliverer. My deliverer, he's standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer, he's standing by. Listen, the riches of the kingdom are for those who are part of the kingdom. So, administration. You are here listening, following online from whatever nation of the world or you are in here and you know sincerely in the name of honesty that you have not given your life to Jesus Christ or you are here and you are saying apostle I love Jesus with all my heart but for some reason my life has just gone haywire and I don't want to deceive myself wherever you are in the next one minute I'd like you to leave your seat and come and stand here quickly I want to lead you to Jesus win that war of destiny right now Think of your children while you make this decision. If there's anybody like that, quickly, please. Don't wait for the first person. Be the first. Win that war and come and stand here. Let's celebrate them as they come. Celebrate them as they come. What a life. Is this the best you can do? Don't sit back there and say, one day go better. When the Titanic sank, they were were only two lists those who were lost and those who were saved your deliverer is coming your deliverer is standing by please look at me I want to salute all of you young and old alike for making this bold decision. When we come to receive the life of God, it's not like a funeral service. This is, this is, keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Listen, it is selfish to sit back and not make it right. When you know your children will suffer, your children's children will suffer. It's an opportunity that God is giving. The Bible says when he, the spirit of truth is come, he says that he will convict the world of three things. Of righteousness, of sin, and of judgment. Lift your right hand, all of you who are here, high to the heavens. You who are here, high to the heavens. 
heart and I believe that you are the son of God tonight I receive Jesus as my Lord my Savior the power of, of sin of Satan and of the flesh is broken from off my life from today I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life keep your hands lifted father we present to you the ones Jesus died for and in the name of Jesus we declare that the power of sin the grave the flesh hell is broken over their lives forever we commend you to the ministry of the word and of the spirit and we declare that you become built you become established the power of Satan is broken from off your life forever in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen okay now this is what you would do please all of you in concert as we clap for you you just get into that room there will be officials that will follow you just for a few minutes and you'll come back and join us as we pray let's celebrate them quickly as they do so God bless you God bless you God bless you please appreciate them Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? That this will become a moment of destiny. That many of you writing the history of your life and say I remember it was at Water Life Center December 2020 that that siege was broken please when it's time to pray I like you to pray I know that we've spent a little time but please just walk with me God wants to visit our destinies TV Israel Oh come oh come Emmanuel and run some cop TV Israel Rejoice Rejoice Emmanuel has come to you Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. God had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above all names. He said that at the mention of that name, that everything in the earth, in heaven and under the earth, will bow and declare that Jesus is Lord. As you shout that name, every altar, every ordinance, we are coming with the rock of a higher priesthood. Please, I'd like you to bring them out here. Will... Please, I'd like you to bring them out here. There will be a convention. Lord, the destinies that have been tied down, the 
families that have been tied down as you shout Jesus at the count of three. Let there be deliverance. Are you ready now? At the count of three, fire upon altars and shakato shekete baza. In the name of Jesus, bring them out. I command yokes of darkness be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken now. Hallelujah. Now, listen to me. Please bring them out. We are praying. I'm seeing, I'm seeing fire coming on ladies. Because a woman is a gate in the realm of the spirit. I use you as a point of contact. Every daughter of Zion here that has been oppressed by spirit. In dreams, at the count of three, shout Jesus. One, two, three. That fire upon your destiny. That fire. Shake it, take it, take it. Kamata. Embrekete katoso seketa. Kebrendes kabaria shada. Ancestral or. Yokes of darkness, edge long spirits, lift up your heads, all ye gates, be lifted up, ancient doors. families. Father, I pray that any family here that has been eaten over by the seed of delay, I declare right now in the name of Jesus, as you shout again, the healer, that shout of praise, in the name of Jesus, may that fire rest upon you. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I cost delay. I cost delay. I, I cost delay. The spirits of delay leave these families in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Now everyone say this after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come by the blood and I declare that on account of the sacrifice of Jesus, every legal access that the devil has over my life, my family, my destiny, my finances, let the blood speak. Lift your hands and pray. Pray, pray, pray. Let the blood speak. Let the blood speak against ordinances. Let the blood speak. Every legal access. What a life are you praying? Online are you praying? Shebenegaremos. Rakata pakata pakata chakata pakata. Shabbat toast. Em prakata kato kata shalakata. Hallelujah. Lay your hands on your head. Say the name of Jesus, my head, you are the symbol of my glory, everything that has brought you down, release me now, I rise, hallelujah, hallelujah, say in the name of Jesus, Every prison door and every prison gate stopping my advancement, stopping my influence, I declare, be broken, lift your voice and pray. Every prison door, he has broken the gates of bars and cut the bars of iron in thunder. Jesus, every human agent in partnership with altars, in partnership with spirits, again declare judgment. Now, lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Jesus. Are you tired? Say in the name of Jesus. My finances. Hear the word of the Lord. I decree and declare my portion in this land, in this nation, within my territory, come to me. Lift your voice and pray. My portion. God is a God of portions. My portion, through wisdom, come to me. Through value, come to me. Through relationships, come to me. Through 
through favor come to me through innovation come to me tell you fire is burning in this place listen to me the bible says and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren then the bible tells us the beginning of the story that the mother cursed him because she bore him in sorrow but Jabez came to a point where he said oh that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast is someone ready to pray say father this of my life I am grateful for it but shift me to a higher level shift me in ministry shift me financially shift me spiritually lift your voice and pray higher level higher dimension higher dimension grateful for this level but take me higher Grateful for this level, but lift me higher for the sake of your kingdom, for the sake of your majesty. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The last prayer, and then we'll deal with the request here. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. It says, I have power by the Spirit. I have power and it is by the Spirit. Psalm 66 verse 3 says, Say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. Not through the greatness of your speaking. Is someone ready to pray? One last prayer. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, the anointing, the unction, the grace to rise from this pit and to remain in victory. Let it come upon me from heaven. Lift your voice and pray. The unction for the next level. The grace from the Spirit. to truly honor your pastor and your father for allowing this I have a covenant with God of answered prayers <laughs> hallelujah yes I do I do listen to me let me pray for those in front here all of you that have come to the front every spirit that holds your life you know my voice I send it as an instruction in the realm of the spirit. At the count of three, let them go now. One, two, three, out of them now. Go, 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 go. Out of their lives. Out of their destinies. Everything you have stolen in the name of Jesus, be gone forever. In the name of Jesus, we cause you altars of darkness. Be gone forever. In the name of Jesus. We see the rain of your love. We feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. We see the rain of your love. We feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear, so let it rain. Let 
says unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come please listen I'm standing in faith and I'm standing in partnership with the grace upon your father if you are yet to drop yours please just bring it here this is a representation of your pain this is a representation of your sleepless night this is a representation of that which you do not want to see. Exodus 14, 14. Please give it to us. Shalada salish shalahas kabranda gatuziata. Haroza zima atoja le grondo ziziata rosa tabalikata. The Lord himself, the Bible says, shall fight for you. And all that will remain with you is your peace. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Please stretch your hands towards me. I'd like you to agree with me and pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit everywhere. As I lay my hands upon these requests. upon your request prophetically the same way I'm standing upon it everything that is on you as a Lord I bring it under your feet now in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God in the name of Jesus the son of the living God it says behold I give you authority to tread upon snakes and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy believers hear me these Egyptians that you have dropped today in the name of Jesus you will see them no more forever you will see them no more forever you will see them no more forever Listen, Job said he will deliver you from six things. One of it is the scourging tongues of men. Any pronouncement over anyone's destiny, whether it was warranted or unwarranted, my Bible says even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I declare by the blood, be free from every cause free from every pronouncement in the name of Jesus in Genesis 32 the Bible says when Jacob was alone a man came to him and he wrestled and he said leave me for the day break it he said I will not let you go unless you bless me and he said what is your name he said Jacob he said thou shalt no longer be called Jacob but Israel for as a prince you have had power with God and prevailed. And he touched the whole of his tie and blessed him. And then my Bible says the sun arose and they called the name of that place Peniel, the face of God. Whatever has made night time in your life and has stopped light from rising. In the name of Jesus I declare, let your night be turned into day now. Hear me. Whatever has refused to walk in your life, it's a master we have toiled all night. Please believe these are not just mere words. They are words with a throne that backs them. 
Master, we have toiled all night. He said, nevertheless, at your word, what you did and failed, January, February, March, where you failed, we empower you. Go back and excel. Go back and excel. Help them, please, my God. Go back and excel. Hear me. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Whatever needs to die for you to see, I declare right now, may the earth open and swallow it. And David said, is there any man of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Hallelujah. Yes. And they sent him to Lodabar. And he went and brought a crippled man called Mephibosheth. Ziba had 15 sons. And yet none of the sons was favored. And he brought Mephibosheth and said, you will eat with me here. And the sons of Ziba were the ones who would pour his land. I pray for you. Every destiny helper allocated by grace to you. In this season, from the north to the south, the east and the west, by the power of prophecy, I call them into your life. Financial helpers, ministerial helpers, destiny helpers. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're rounding up. Anyone called barren in this place, whether for you or for your loved ones, you have been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. In the name of Jesus, like Eli, I stand in priesthood with your pastor and we declare according to the time of life, return with your miracle testimony. Anyone trusting God for a job in this city or around this nation, I don't care how long you have waited, I stretch my hands to you and I declare by the spirit of grace, three months, like the ark of God in the house of Obed Edom, we speak to you the words of grace in the name of Jesus, the allocation that is your portion, let it come to you. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. And Jesus grew and Jesus increased. Whatever has refused to grow in your life, everything that is alive grows. So your influence should grow. Your knowledge should grow. Your prayer life should grow. Your relationship should grow. Everything stagnating your growth. In the name of Jesus Christ, I curse it out of your life now. Hallelujah. Every family here that has the testimony of Ichabod, that you were once in glory, you once tasted honor. Mariko Sazia has Kabaranda Shalakata, Grataska Bedekatosha Lenda Brakatosa, Ega Kepakatosha Tokoto, Baran. Upon those hands that are stretched towards me, nothing dies in that hand. Can I pray for your spiritual life? I don't know what has happened to your fire. Shamaka so balakata, prayer fire, what study fire. I pray for you right now. Fresh fire upon your altar. Fresh fire upon your altar. Fresh fire upon your altar. Some of you, before you get home, 
you will find the things that you are your expectations here waiting for you. And I say it by the spirit of grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, listen. I fear God and I love God with all my heart. But I know, know by the spirit that this session will not profit you until you are challenged to drop a seed that represents a sacrifice. Listen, I'm a man of integrity and I fear God. Your pastor is a man of integrity. It is difficult to teach these things to the saints because it has been abused. But I stand by the spirit as I'm standing here. I know by the spirit of God that if we just round up this session and you go, my conscience will not allow me because I understand spiritual things. When the angel came to Cornelius, he said, your prayer and your arms, not your prayer alone, your prayer and your arms. Listen to me. Please listen, listen, listen. I will never by the grace of God and as he supplies grace, manipulate anybody under the sun in the guise of ministry towards giving and i will never tell you to do something that i will not do myself as i'm speaking to you now i'm going to reach down to my own pocket to and give now i don't know whether it's a special giving whether it's with the offering combined whatever it is but i want you to agree with god and say father i want to use this seed to seal this deliverance I know that some of you may have suffered abuses from respectfully men of God and from ministries and because they've twisted some of these things every time we talk about sowing you think it is some gimmicks by the grace of God God has shown us mercy and he has shown of grace so every 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 declaration that you should give is not for personal profiting no it is to the end that this becomes a seal are we together I don't know whether it is a check you're going to write. I don't know whether it is a seed you're going to give. But I want you to stand wherever you are. And agree with God on a seed that you are going to bring a, a sacrifice. I want to pray. Don't just come and drop it. It's not about money. It's about the word that is on it. You drop seed, you just did donation and went back. What gives life to it is the anointing that rests upon it. If it's the church account that you need... I'm, I don't know if I'm okay. I'm seeing an account. Those following online from whatever nation, you can call the finance lines or call those available. And I want you to believe. Some of you are trusting God for increase sorts in your life. I still have one more session tomorrow by the grace of God. And as we celebrate the Lord, I'm going to show you one more mystery. If God grants you the grace and it is within your power, make every sacrifice to be here. I respect men of God and I respect ministries. But please hear me. If it's a sacrifice that is within your power, please be here tomorrow morning. You notice we've not done any impartation or speaking on you. There is something that is left to balance this conference tomorrow. But for now, Please hold on. Hold on. If you are giving, just, just hold on. I'm not just talking of, of a seed that you come and drop. The Bible says, and Solomon loved the Lord, and that he offered a thousand bond offerings. And that night, God did not send an angel. He came to him himself and said, Solomon, he said, what would you have me give you? And Solomon prayed for an understanding heart. He said, because you have not asked for the life of your enemies, you have not asked for this and that. I will give you this that you have asked for. And what you have not given, riches, wealth, and honor, such as no man has had, I will give to you. And he woke up and his life changed. I want to pray for you. Most times we give as if we're helping the man of God. Most times we give from a ritualistic standpoint. And that's why there is no life. It's not in the money. It's in the understanding. Are we together? Now... I want you to agree with God, whatever it is, maybe as a couple you can agree, as a family, but I want you, don't just drop money, let it be a seal to say, Lord, my fathers could not do this, my mothers could not do this, but here at this conference, in this atmosphere 
of deliverance. I'm lifting this seed and that as I drop it in the name of Jesus, let this terminate hardship. Let it seal that open door and keep it open. And let this be for transgenerational continuity of your kindness and faithfulness. That the covenant that God had with David that makes for his peace and his mercy, let it also come upon my life. Lift your hands or lift your seed, whatever you have. Lift it up and let's pray. Father, you are not a man that you should lie. You are not the son of man. You do not deceive men. You are a God of integrity. And Lord, I stand in faith and in partnership with Reverend Godwin Abba, his great wife, the leadership of this commission, this ministry. I stand in the presence of your people and Lord, we declare that it is time for us to end certain seasons and to birth others. Some of you have emptied your accounts to do this. Some of you are standing in rugged faith, believing the God that can do the impossible. I stand in the name of Jesus Christ as one who God has shown mercy and grace and I speak over your seeds I give it a voice in the realm of the spirit according to Psalm 50 verse 5 it said gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice and I declare may your sacrifice turn into an altar in the spirit an altar that remains as a memorial for you that you will never forget this conference for the rest of your life. For those trusting God for open doors, we turn this seed into a key in the realm of the spirit. Let it open strange doors for you. For those that are trusting God for restoration, I declare in the name of Jesus, let your seed become a magnet that draws back to your life everything that once left you. In the name of Jesus, for those that are trusting God for visitation in your family, let this seed become a weapon of victory that will fight battles even when you sleep. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless your seed and I speak that it is blessed. Let it go into your future and wait for you. I speak to this seed. Go around the city of Abuja. Gather your kind. Return back to the givers a thousandfold. Go around this nation. Gather your kind. Return back to the givers in the name of Jesus. The Lord will bless you and the earth will fear him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Please cast your seed with understanding. How do we do it now? Do you come out? Okay. Please come out quickly. Just come and drop your seed quickly and turn back with understanding. Let's hurry up so we can wrap up the meeting. Let the ushers direct you so that we don't stampede on each other. Ushers, just get that done quickly. Okay, so please. Get that done quickly. Just do it carefully. You. Do it carefully. Just go ahead. There are bags in front and there are buckets at the angles. The Lord bless you. It doesn't have to be the one in front. Anyone you can Anyone. see. Exactly. Yes. I'm sure there are ushers on the gallery. Okay, fine. So the whole minute for you coming down, there are ushers on the gallery. Your seat is already blessed. And let nobody leave until we've shared the grace. Shali Barus Kadia Balakata Barus. Don't keep quiet as you go back. Let your word speak something over your destiny. We just have a few more minutes. Make sure as you drop your seed, don't just go back silent. The Bible says, declare ye that thou mightest be justified. Open your mouth and declare. I just dropped my last level financially. I'm rising to a new level. A new level of anointing, a new level of grace, a new level of favor, a new dimension of the hand of God. Can we finish up on time? Please, those coming, just, just come quickly. Come quickly, come quickly, so that.
May I kindly ask, Pastor, what, what time tomorrow's service? Eight o'clock. Okay, it's a combined, I'm told it's a combined service. It's a combined service, so I'm sure that that would just be one service. Please invite everyone and come as we, we receive the final dose of that which God has in store for us by the Spirit. And we trust God that there be a manifestation. The angel said, Blessed is she that believes, for unto her there shall be a performance of those things that were spoken of the Lord. We believe and we expect a performance in the name of Jesus Christ. Please rise up on your feet for the final blessing before I hand the mic over to the apostle over this house. Please help me with the request. You can pick them and just go and burn them. It is done in the name of Jesus Christ. It is done in the name of Jesus Christ. Please do well. Do well to share your testimonies I believe that even tomorrow there will be a room some of you are already receiving testimonies and um, I'm sure that by the grace of God there will be um, provision according to the way things are done here please take advantage of it and let us know so that you can also seal that which God had started doing 10 lepers were healed only one came back to testify and express gratitude and he was the only one who was made whole. In the name of Jesus, you return with the favor of God. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God. And I pray for you that every seed you have dropped here, let it speak for you. It will never be that you came and wasted your time in the presence of God. Your deliverance remains permanent. And every door that has refused to open, all of them, one by one, beginning from this morning or this afternoon, we declare them all opened. In the name of Jesus Christ, give Jesus a big hand clap and celebrate him. Isn't God gracious? God moves in personalities. Please, let's not um, step out until the grace is shared. You've waited this long. Don't disrespect God so that you don't end up disrespected in life. Anytime God moves into a land, he moves through vessels. And by the message of God, in this season, God has passed through this land in vessels. <clears throat> the job with all is that the vessels are visible. Meaning God did not hide anything from us. He spoke to us. He moved in our midst. He touched us. As we live here, let's go start incubating these walls, pondering over them, meditating on them, and declaring them into practical manifestations. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.